Hey everyone, how's it going? So what am I working on now? Oh, I finally got it. Solenoid. So we're going to be replacing this solenoid. Now what I'm going to do too is when I'm making videos, when I'm doing like this type of talking, I'm not going to use the microphone um, just because of how the sound comes out. Uh, it, to me it's too like roar, roar, roar. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to be installing this, we're going to be putting a new lead frame in it, and then we're going to be putting this valve body up in place. So let me start going through all of this and I'll show you what's going on. And then I'll also explain to you what I believe happened here. Ready? So like I said in that short video, somebody was in here because this locking plate down here that holds the solenoids in place, that's supposed to come over to this side. Basically this piece is supposed to be over here from what I can tell. And if you look, you can kind of see a witness mark on here. This is a dead hole. This is a solenoid hole. I think what happened was, I don't think whoever installed this folded this over. I think what happened was the solenoid got pushed out over time from pressure, and I think the pressure blew the seal over. That's why it's sitting like that. So it just happened to be making enough contact in there, and it would seal just enough and then once the pressure was building up it would it would come and hang out like this and allow pressure to blow out so what we're going to do is we're going to install the new solenoid and we're going to move this plate over and then we're going to install everything now somebody had mentioned in the comments they said well how do you know you're installing the right solenoid maybe somebody changed that solenoid and they installed the wrong one that's actually a very good question. Uh, however, the truck shifts beautifully, perfectly, up until it gets until the transmission fluid gets fully warmed up. Then at that point, when this gets pushed out of its bore, I'm assuming, I can't see it while it's in the car, um, at that point is when it loses pressure and the thing defaults to fifth gear. So. That's the only thing I can come up with, and it's the only thing that really makes sense. So, all right. Um, yeah, let's get going with this. All right, so what we're going to do is we have our transmission assembly gel, transmission assembly lube, this stuff. And we are going to slather it, use it liberally, on the solenoid. This stuff melts quickly. So it melts and dissolves into transmission fluid. Uh, that's kind of what it's designed to do. So basically we're going to take this and we're going to stick it in the bore. I did inspect the bore first to make sure it was okay. Now we stick that in, I don't know if you noticed, it goes in and then it's just kind of like, make sure you go gently and then all of a sudden, boop, it pops in. So perfect. That's all I really wanted. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take this plate, we're going to take all these screws out, we're going to move it over. Actually, let me flip this thing over. It'll make my life a little bit easier. Now always be careful so you're not damaging anything on the valve body, like when you're laying it down on a bench or whatever, so you don't accidentally, you know, scrape. A mounting surface or something like up in here. That knocked the end of this solenoid off. This is the only completely different solenoid on here. So basically, we're going to take this, and we're going to just move it over one, like that. That locks the solenoid in place. So like I said, obviously somebody was in here and somebody messed with it and didn't do the right thing going back together. Hey, mistakes happen though, I understand that, I get it. 
Always catch all your screws first before you tighten anything down. start from the center out. Now this tool positively locks once it shuts down, so I'm just checking to make sure they're tight. I'm not going to bother torquing these because this only goes onto a steel onto a steel, or this steel plate goes onto an aluminum bridge here. This is not going to warp the valve body if you don't torque it correctly. So it's just tight. It's good enough. So now we are going to get the new lead frame. Now the reason we're replacing the lead frame, if you look, you see how the gap up here is nice and it eventually gets closer down here. See how close it is here compared to up there? So this whole end has been flexing from that solenoid pushing in and out. So I'd be afraid that this thing's damaged on the inside. So let's go get the new one and let's mount that in place. I'm gonna have to change your position here. I'm gonna have to return that one. So I got the new one here. Make sure you can see what I'm doing. There you go. We have this little separator that goes in between all the electrical connections for the solenoids. Put that down in place. It may not sit exactly right off the bat. enough. Oh, actually that did pop the end of this off right here. Okay. It was just a locking piece probably to keep that together. All right, so now we basically just lay this down into place. Should flip it over this way and do it this way. Although you might not be able to see it. Also, this here, this piece. Let me get you a little closer. Hang on a second. So this piece here has to line up with this here. This moves. Actually, not super smooth either. It should be, but it's not. Huh. Okay. I guess that stays on the outside to keep the keep it from pushing through the bore. There's a clip here. All right. So now we're inserting this whole thing on here.
Like I said, make sure that this lines up. Let's see if I can focus in on that a little bit. See that down there? Come on. There we go. See that down there? That has to line up with that as it goes together. So now, what we have to do is pick up on this a little bit, or have it hang over the bench just a little bit, as it all starts to go together. There it goes. There it goes. It's a little difficult to see, but everything just kind of snaps together. And all the electrical connectors, they self line up and they self go in. So all of that should be in place. All right, and then, whoopsie, and I even missed this. This thing actually moved, see that? See that? So now I gotta pop that back out and get that to line up. Sometimes the pitfalls of showing you guys how things go together. Not a big deal. Okay. There, see that? So now, that's lined up in there. So now, that piece, that basically that's the neutral safety switch, or the uh, range switch, they call it. So now, that thing moves together with that. So now we can put our screws back in. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let me go find out what the torque is supposed to be and then let's torque that. Alright, so from here we're going to torque those bolts up, those uh, mounting bolts. And we go to 53. So now we can install this back up in the transmission. Now before you do so, you want to flip it back over. Just take a look. Make sure there's nothing on here, no debris or anything like that, especially on these points here. Now you might get a little dust or dirt. It's possible, but I usually try to wipe them off. I won't use a rag on something like this because a rag can actually leave lint in different spots. I'll wipe my gloves off with a rag, but I'll usually wipe these areas off by hand. Unless you have a lint-free rag you can go with. This is usually what I do, just to make sure everything's nice and clean. All right, so now, let me do this. Let me get the camera set up for underneath the vehicle. I gotta show you what we're gonna do there, and I'm gonna hook up the microphone, too. All right, now if you remember, this thing fell out. This goes up right inside here. So now what we're going to do is we're going to slather this thing with transmission assembly gel. Because we want this thing to stay up in place. And transmission assembly gel will assist in keeping it up in that hole. So what I'm doing is I'm actually just slathering it up now. I'm going to... Pack some 
extra in the hole there. And then we take this and we force it up in the hole with all that Atrani assembly gel in place. And then we pray that everything stays where it's supposed to. So all I'm doing is I'm just wiping my fingers off of all this training assembly gel. I actually wipe it off back into the container so this way it lasts as long as possible. Now, if it's in the middle of summer and it's really hot, you may want to take the training assembly gel and stick it in the fridge because otherwise that will fall out. All right, so now as we're going back together, this has to line up to that notch in that piece that I was showing you. Make sure these seals are all in place. This one has some, sometimes can fall down. Make sure these are all in place. Let me go get the valve body. Let's put that up. Now, like I said, too, make sure all your um, mounting points are clean as you're going up in there. Now, while I'm doing this, I try to line up this lever at the same time. Okay, so now that's pretty darn close. Try to catch a screw where it needs to be. And the problem is because everything's covered in tranny fluid, it has a tendency to, to be slick and not want to cooperate. Kind of like this, where this is not wanting to cooperate. Okay. All right. No. I am right here because I don't want this thing to fall. Because I barely caught that screw there. All right, that one caught a little better. All right, so they're caught. All right, so now let me catch all the other ones. <coughs> And like I said, it can, can be a real pain because of the tranny fluid itself. And some valve bodies are unbelievably heavy. Like the eight-speed GMs, wow, those things are heavy. And trying to do this over your head, hold everything in place, and then get everything lined up and caught. Oof. You need two people, really. Because it could just be too much. Make sure you're seeing everything that I'm seeing. Okay. All right, so those are all caught. There's three over here. Make sure this tab is hanging down. That will really make a difference when we're assembling the wiring harness. And there's three short screws that go on this one. Whoops, on this side. I wound up catching that socket. I got like cat-like reflexes. That was a joke. All right. One more. All right. So now that I know all the screws are in there, what I'm going to do is take my little quarter gun. Actually, no, not all the screws are in there. I'm missing one. One had fallen on the floor. Almost forgot about it. And this one goes here. All 
All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm not forcing the screws down in place. I can't remember off the top of my head which screws are which, so just bear with me. You want to make sure everything's going in flush the way it's supposed to. these on the end here. All right. So now All right, everything looks like it is where it's supposed to be. So let me go find out what the torque is supposed to be for all of those bolts and let's torque that down. All right, so I had to make up a little diagram here so I know how to torque this. My printer for some reason is not being very happy, so whatever. So just gotta figure this out. So we got, now they're supposed to be torqued to 71. I'm actually torquing them to about 48 right now and then I'll go to 71. So we got, one, two, three, four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. I did that one backwards, but whatever. Okay. All right. So now let me change it up. Good. Seventy-one. Here's actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little magnet and attach this. the final torque down. All right, so should be that one, right? Let me make sure. No. It's this one. Okay. So one, two, three, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. All right. So that should all be good. Always back out on your torque wrenches when you're done. They can last a long time like that. Now this lever, you have to make sure this is down because when we go to install the cup on the end that for the wiring harness on the outside, that could create a problem if you don't have that down because that this is what actually locks it. So, 
So, where do I put it? Okay, this I'm not going to really be able to film all that well. But here is that cup. So I'm going to coat this in tranny assembly lube. Make it easier to stick into where it needs to go. And you can see this is really all I'm doing. And like I said, transmission assembly gel, I use this stuff for everything. I use it for fuel injectors. I use it for anything, but don't use it on brakes. Um, anything related to brakes. But anything that has a O-ring, as long as it's not brake related, you're fine. If you use it on injectors, it'll more than likely create a misfire for a short period of time, and then that'll clear up. All right, so now this has to insert back there in that hole. And this thing will only go in one way, but I don't, like I said, I don't know if I can film this at all. Hang on a second, let me see what I can come up with. All right, this is about as best as I can get it. Now this thing goes only in one position, but I don't know what that position is until I kind of get up to the side there. And it'll, there it goes. Okay. So now that snapped in place. So hopefully this lever underneath will go in. So let me move you yet again. Pretty neat little bracket Mrs. Wrenching got me. So now, this little lever right here should snap up in place. Now with it up in place, let me make sure that this cup stays in place, and it does. So now, let me hook you back up over here, and now we're going to try and get this connector I don't remember how this thing goes like that okay so now that thing's locked down in place uh, hopefully you saw that I might have been off I apologize if I was but there you see the connectors in place now all right so let me take this off of here and with that connector in place, so now we can put the filter on and <clears throat> put the filter on and finish this up. Do this with you. Now, a few people have asked too about the filter. The filter is just suspended inside. Inside the pan itself, there are little divots that actually will hold the filter in its position. So. Just grabbing a filter. Hang on a second. So now the filter has a seal on it. And the seal inserts up in the pan there. Or up inside the housing there. Now this thing sits... But there's divots in the pan that contact here and hold this thing up and in place where it's supposed to be. So I can get rid of this. And now <clears throat> we can start to put the pan up in place. Um, question is, what did I do with my little 8 millimeter? Hang on a minute. Let me go find that. Now in that other video where I lost some audio and you saw that one frame or that one part of the video where I had no audio for like two minutes, um, I had lost a few clips of the video that I couldn't use because I had lost the audio. So let me get this up in place. And all that video was going to show was the... Um, Ah, that's a loud person down there. All that video was going to show was the um, me disconnecting that electrical connector and pulling that little socket piece out that holds the electrical connector and then dropping the filter off. All right. So now those are 
caught. So now we're going to catch a bunch of these other ones. And usually what I will do is I will use my gun to get these caught up there because, you know, I got arthritis in my hands and sometimes sitting there working a nice small screw or whatever can get a little painful. But I am not just ramming them in there. I'm going very gentle. I'm making sure they're catching. This gun is set on a very low power. So I'm not concerned about stripping out a hole. I should make a video on using helicoils and thread certs. You know, just a straight up, this is how to use them. Because I've had a few people ask me those questions. So, if you think you'd like to see something like that, let me know. And never tighten these down until you get them all in place. Because otherwise you are asking for trouble. All right. So now, for the other end, I have to use a universal. Because down on that end... They're tucked up. Over the exhaust system. Sometimes these can be a little bit of a pain because the gasket walks a little bit. Make sure, like I said, get everything caught. Before you start tightening anything. And that goes with anything, not just transmission pans. Anything you're doing, make sure everything's caught before you start tightening anything. I can't tell you how many times I've seen that over the years. Especially torque converter bolts. I don't know why. I've seen that numerous times, more times than I can count. When people all of a sudden start tightening torque converter bolts right away, and instead of doing like two rotations of the motor to you know catch them all and then tighten them, I actually do three. So I do one rotation to catch them all, another rotation to snug them down, and another rotation to tighten them all. Um, but I see people tighten them immediately and then all of a sudden they can't catch one. It's like, you know, they get to the last one, they realize they can't catch it. So,
So basically I'm just going to tighten these all up now. We have the compressor going now, so I'm going to stop this for a little bit. I'm just going to tighten those up and then we're going to start putting fluid in it. All right, so what I'm doing is I'm filling from here into there. This is all the fluid I took out of this thing. It's not going to take this much going back in until it starts to overflow uh, because I still have to fill the converter. So what's going to happen is once it starts to pour out into the said bucket, hopefully, once it starts to pour out, then I stop this, I start the vehicle, and at that point I cycle it through the gears to make sure that everything goes into gear, and that should fill up the converter, and then I can add the rest of the fluid, and we can verify the level. All right, so instead of risking a big, giant mess, possibly, I mean, it doesn't make a big, giant mess, but it still makes a little bit of a mess. Uh, what I did was, that thing had about a little more than eight liters. I put a little more than four liters into it, as you can see by the level there. Put a little more than four liters into it. I'm going to stop here, and now I'm going to start it, cycle it through the gears and stuff like that. So let me just button this up, let this down, and we're going to do that. All righty, so I have disconnected the battery when I put this thing up in here because I knew it was going to be on the lift for a while. There, we're connecting the battery. Notice something? There's no bolt in that one. No bolt in the pod. Not sure why. It wasn't my doing. Well, we are going to put a bolt in there for this customer. to go bananas tightening up um, battery terminal ones. I told you that before. And let me see if I can find a bolt for that. Hang on a second. All right, so I think I found something here. Now, when you're tightening up a positive post like this, see what I'm doing here? Be careful, because this is ground. So you don't want to hit in the ground and create a problem. So there we go, it's tight. Way better than before. All right, let's start this thing up. Cycle it through its gears. I gotta fit through that. Hang on. Wasn't pretty, but I'm inside. All right, let's start it up. All right, engage gear. So that's good. Engage, engaged. All right, so we are going to keep it running, and we're going to top off the fluid. All right, so we're going to let that go till it fills up, and then we're going to check the fluid level. I'm not going to let you, I'm not going to have you sit here and watch this entire thing. It's just going to take a few minutes. Okay, so now that that finished up, now we're going to double check the fluid level. Now, we got to remember, I lost a lot from the valve body being on the bench and just general making a mess. So yeah, it's gonna need probably another quart. So it kind of makes sense between what I lost on the floor, what I lost, you know, from what doesn't get transferred from that, what got lost on the bench, stuff like that. So let me get a little more fluid. Okay, so I've added about another two quarts actually. So now, see the level there? Halfway on that lower hash mark or hatch mark, whatever you want to call it, cross hatch. That's perfectly fine. I'm good with that. Let's put that back in there. Because the transmission is not fully heated up yet, so it's going to come up and it's going to be right about in the center of the other hash mark where it's supposed to be once it's fully warmed up. I know this because I've done these many, many of these over, over the years. 
and you don't have to go bananas tightening that just snug and you're good all right let me get some brake clean let me just clean this off we're gonna get a scanner and we're gonna go for a road test okay so ready to go on a road test here and I'm just doing a code scan real quick I did do a code scan I cleared everything I'm just doing another code scan uh, because it had memory codes and stuff um, oops shut that off but as you can see right now as it's doing a scan it's not complete yet uh, 64% 67% now but anyway so engine transmission currently have no codes so we're gonna go for a road test and hopefully it's gonna stay no codes I'm pretty confident well, let's find out never know so I've gone on a pretty extensive road test so far no issues everything seems fine it's shifting great it's doing what it's supposed to do and it's a lot hotter today than it has been um, it's like I believe it's upper 70s um, we actually have the air conditioning on in the shop uh, we're just not used to it um, but I'm I've basically done like a double road test compared to what I normally do and I'm back at the same point where this thing would fail each and every time no matter what I did so it just I, I think it just happened to be mileage related and temperature related um, but I'm about to make a u-turn in the spot where I always made a u-turn before and now I'm gonna see if it acts up <laughs> I tell you what my allergies are kicking my butt you know, I got over that whole bronchitis thing finally, and now I got just really bad allergies kicking my teeth for duty. So here we go. Here's the U-turn, and yeah, no issues. I'm I'm very happy. Another thing I used to do is come down this way. The next traffic light make a right and it would do it there too hey what this thing's got some noisy tires on it I don't know if you can hear that howling noise but that's all tires considering this thing's got 221,000 miles on it, it runs pretty good and it drives pretty good too you know other than the transmission problem that it had Shift six, five, four, three, and then one. That's how that always does. Yep, okay. So now we're gonna make a right, just waiting for a car to go by. See, before just sitting there, it would shift one, two, one, six, or one, two, one, five. So. Yay! I'm confident it's fixed. So I would have never been able to drive it this long. Let me just get back to the shop and I want to double check codes. Now we're going to end this video. Alright, so back at the shop. Just ran it for codes. That's in tranny. No codes present, which is perfect. So, yay! I'm happy. So, I'm sure the customer's going to be happy too. So, there's a lot to do to get to this point. Had we been told everything right from the beginning, it would have probably gone differently. I would have probably inspected that solenoid pack and everything else very thoroughly when I put the first lead frame in this thing. But didn't know. You know, nobody told me. All I knew was the pan had been dropped and a customer changed the fluid himself. That's all I was told, or something along those lines. So, I don't know. It is what it is. What are you going to do? It's fixed. I'm happy. All right. Um, yeah, so hopefully you're getting something out of my videos. If you are, hit that like button. If you could, please subscribe. Um, I guess that's about it. All right, guys, have a great day. Keep wrenching.